Hi, this is Mike with Waverfile. In this video, we're going to go over how to set up the Waverfile free trial and get your waiver forms configured and go over some of the settings that we have. If you haven't already, you can sign up for our free trial on our website just by filling out this form. I'm going to go ahead and do that now to create a test account to show you how some of it works. The URL field will allow you to customize the address that you will have for your Waverfile account. In this case, I'll just call it sample. Make sure it's available and then click Get Started. You'll be presented with the links to your waiver file site. You have the admin link here and the signature area here. But first we'll just click the Setup button to get started. You'll also receive an email with all the login information for your account. Be sure to check your spam folder if you don't see it within a few minutes. So first we'll create our waiver form name, but before we do that let's jump over to our sample waiver form. And here we have a typical Wavel form that you might have, and we just have it in Microsoft Word here. So first we're going to put in the name, which in this case we're just calling it Liability Waiver. The status option will let you turn a waiver file on and off if you want to, so you could set it to disabled if you have multiple and want to disable it but not delete it. Including the signature box will allow people to sign on the screen. Generally, you want to allow that to leave that checked. The minimum signing age will be enforced, assuming you have the date of birth field enabled on your form. It will not allow anyone under that age to sign. You can also choose to include the participant date of birth and also make it required if you want to. If you have a minimum age for kids to participate, you can specify the minimum participant age here. If anyone tries to sign up a child who's under that age, they'll be told that that person can't participate. You can set a maximum participant age, and what this feature does is stop one adult from signing for another. So if you require that each adult sign their own waiver, you could set this to 18, and no one can sign for anyone else over the age of 18. Maximum participants perform you can leave blank, and the default will be set to 30. But if you only want to have, let's say, five participants perform, you can set it there. Allow adults to sign for children is just that. If you want to disallow that, you can uncheck this box. And include for general admission is the, the main signing screen, which we'll get into later. But we'll leave that checked for now. Then we'll click Next Step. The next step is where we set up all our specific form fields. So the default form fields include email, address, phone, and date of birth. Then you can choose if you want to ask customers to join the mailing list. Now this is important if you wind up using one of our connectors to third-party mailing systems. It will use the values that are collected here to decide whether or not to send those names over to that service. Then here you can create custom form fields. So let's look at our sample form field, our sample waiver, and go down here. So we have some standard form fields in this one. We have first name, middle name, last name, date of birth, but then we have emergency contact name and phone number. So those are custom fields that weren't in that first that first list. So let's add those. So for the name and phone number we're going to add a text field. So as you saw I just clicked on the text box here which creates a text field. And I can click on that to customize it to call it emergency contact name. I'm going to say that it's required because let's say we need to have it. Then we'll click on this tab to add a new field. And let's click another one, another text box for the emergency phone number. Emergency contact phone. Now let's see what other cost, uh, form fields we had in there. We also have a home phone number, we'll call that the main phone number, and we can add an alternate phone number. Everything else looks like it's standard. Oh, and how did you hear about us? So let's add those two. If you add an extra one that you want to remove, when you mouse over you can click on the red minus. And likewise if you want to duplicate one you can click on this plus, and it's going to make a copy. That's more useful when you start doing drop-down lists. So let's take a look at some of the other form field options actually. So we'll go to drop-down list, and you'll see it makes a drop-down. So let's call that, how did you hear about us? We're going to say it's not required, so the star will disappear. And then let's put some options. Let's say Google, word of mouth, and maybe you're sending out flyers, let's say newsletter. Other form field options are paragraph, which will give you a larger box, check boxes, 
which is a list of checkboxes. So if you want someone to be able to select multiple items, that's the item that you want to select. Remove that. Multiple choice is similar to a drop down list, except you can see all the options at once. And a number field appears as a text box, but it's going to allow you to specify that it has to be a number, minimum, maximum values, and only accept integers, which means whole numbers. So you can enforce any of those rules that you need. You can also add a section break, which will allow you to put a heading for a second section in here, which sort of breaks up your form. If you have a lot of form fields, sometimes that's a good idea for a layout. Now we're going to put in our waiver text. So that represents the rest of this. So what I'm going to do is select all of my text from Word. I'm going to hit copy. And I'm going to go to my form and hit paste. Now it's going to ask you if you paste from Word, do you want to clean it? And you'll say yes. And what that's going to do is clean up some of the extra formatting that Microsoft Word usually puts in there. Then I'm just going to scroll down and review and make sure everything looks okay. That looks alright to me. If you want to put an initialing box within the text, you'll see here is the code that you can use. It looks like this. So we're going to go ahead, let's just say, we'll just to try it, we'll put that right in there. And then we'll click Save. Now let's go click on the Signature Area button to see how this looks. And this is the main signing area that people will see when they come to sign their waiver. The only difference being that this warning box is letting me know that I am logged in as an administrator. So if you set, if you log in on a public terminal, you're going to want to log out so that uh, the general public doesn't go into the admin area. But let's just go ahead and click on general admission and see how that looks. And now you're going to see here's our heading and our lead-in text. Here's all our uh, waiver agreement text right here, including the initial box that we created. And you can sign with your mouse on a computer like I am now, but if you're on a tablet, you're going to sign with your finger or a stylus, whatever kind of whatever device you have will work. Then you're going to choose who's participating. Fill out your form, sign it, and click I agree, which is going to save it into the admin dashboard. All right, so let's go to the admin dashboard. I've gone ahead and signed a sample waiver so you can see how that looks. So under general admission, right away, I see a list of names here. Now, if you click on the grouped checkbox, you're going to see that they're all grouped in together and there's only one link here because these were signed as one waiver. So let's go ahead and click on that waiver and see what it looks like. All the details that were entered on the form appear here, including the client's IP address, the names of all participants, and any of the custom fields that we added. So you'll see the emergency contact name all appears here. Along with the initials and the signature and the date and time that it was signed. From here you can choose to email a copy to the signee, which I'll say yes, and that's going to go ahead and mail a copy over there. And then you can say email a copy to me, which emails a copy to you, the site owner if you want to have a hard copy. Back to the dashboard. You can click on the column headers to sort the data any way you wish. And you can also choose which uh, records you want to see, whether it's the past week, just today, or some of the other options, list of more recent ones. Under the events heading, you'll see names grouped under the events that are created. So let's jump into events real quick. When you go to the events screen, you'll see all the upcoming events, which since this is a new site, we don't have any. So let's go ahead and create one by clicking on the new event button. So to create an event, we're just going to give it a title and choose a date. So let's choose this weekend at 12.30 p.m. on Saturday. Then you're going to choose which waiver form you want to have for that event. If you have more than one, they'll appear here and you can choose whichever ones apply. The Grant View Access to Event feature will let you put an email address here. This would work if you had someone who's managing a party or the parent of the birthday child. You can put their email address here and they're going to get an email which will give them access to manage the event. They'll be able to see all the waivers within the event, although they won't be able to manage it or change anything. It's just a read-only view. I'll skip that for now and click Save. And you'll see that now we have the upcoming event listed here. Here you're going to have the event link. So if you want to email this form to someone, you can right click on this and choose copy link address. And that's going to take them, which I'll just click on it. That's going to take them directly to signing for this event. So if I sign another one right here real quick, I'll just sign it real quick with one name. Agree. Continue. And then back to the admin. 
you'll see that my name appears right here under this event. So all the upcoming events will list, be listed here in the dashboard with the names who have signed under it. Likewise, we have the check-in view. Now, as people arrive, you can check this box to mark them as checked in. And then over here on the left, you can choose to view all the records, only the checked in or only the not checked in. This can help a lot when you have large events and people are checking in and you only want to see who hasn't checked in yet. You can also click on print, which will give you a few different print options for all the names who have checked in for an event or who have signed for an event. Let's move on to reports. First I'll just run the report and right away I'm seeing recent entries that were here. But I can customize this report. First I can choose the date range for records that I want. Then I can choose custom columns. So let's say I want to hear about how did you hear about us. I'll apply that, run the report, and now I can see the entries as they were for that. I can also choose filters. So let's say I only want people from New York. Say apply, run the report, and now I've only got people from New York. Now I only picked New York, so like if we change it to New Jersey, I'll get no one. So it's easy to filter out the results and get the data you want. And then once you've, once you've got the data you need, you can click the export to Excel button, which will give you an Excel file of the data that you see here. And you can use that for other purposes. The next button on our list is the archive function. And here is very simple. You're going to click a date range for waivers that you want. And you can choose to either download or email it to an email address. And it's going to give you a zip file, which contains a copy of all the waivers that you collected in that date range. To learn more about WaiverFile or to try it free for 30 days, visit WaiverFile.com. Thanks for watching.